clones. Following that, we have the USB wall charger hanging out there wrapped up all nicely and such. This really isn't anything too spectacular, but at the very least, you can charge your iPhone 6 clone. Next up after that is the USB wall charger's PIC, the faux lightning cable, and alongside that is the SIM ejection tool. Now, obviously, I'm not going to bank on the lightning cable being authentic either, but at the very least, it was still pretty cool that they included the entire package like you would get with an iPhone. So now that we've blasted through the unboxing portion, we can dive in and dig a little bit deeper into the clone. I think obviously the biggest noticeable difference aside from the screen size increase is the complete aesthetic change from the iPhone 5S. No longer on the back side will we see those glass portions on the top and the bottom like the iPhone 5S. That will be replaced by what I would assume to be aluminum by the final production model. That is kind of sectioned off by the dual line design on the top and the bottom where presumably the antennas would go. But I think that kind of makes the iPhone 6 design look eerily similar to the HTC One M8. And if you agree or disagree, let me know with a comment down below. One thing I do want to point out that I do not like and it's been consistent across the dummy mock-ups is the fact that the camera on the back side of the iPhone 6 clone pops up. So to me, that would make it very vulnerable to scratches, something similar to the iPod Touch. I know it's probably going to be sapphire coated, but at the very least, why would you want to increase chances of damaging one of the most important pieces on your phone? You can also see different aside from the iPhone 5S. The Apple logo on the iPhone 6 clone is actually indented and recessed in there, much like we saw on the iPad mini with Retina Display and iPad Air. Now, another big difference between these two is the actual power and sleep wake button. On the iPhone 5S, it's located on the top right-hand side, whereas the iPhone 6 clone, that is located on the actual right side above the SIM card tray. Now, because the iPhone 6 will presumably feature a larger 4.7-inch display, I think the power button movement makes sense on a device like this. The volume rockers also look like they're getting some sort of makeover on the iPhone 5S. We have those classic circle Apple volume rockers up and down. But on the iPhone 6 clone, those look very similar to what we see on the iPod Touch again. Now, as far as whether I like them, dislike them, I'm kind of neutral, but I definitely say the increased size makes them a little bit easier to hit. So, like I said previously, this is a fully functional device, but one big difference between this and the real upcoming iPhone 6 is there is no fingerprint touch ID reader on this clone. So that, of course, on this device means you are limited to swiping to unlock your phone. Now, when I said this thing was not a performer, I meant it. It is extremely, almost laughable laggy, and I almost want to go out kind of your average consumer style and go kind of bring this to people out in public and kind of get their feelings on how it performs, maybe even see if they notice the apparent lag compared to a current iPhone or even an Android device. And if that's something you want to see, definitely let me know. So like I also previously talked about, this essentially is an iOS skinned Android device and bits of pieces of Android creep out here and there. For example, if you hold down the home button, normally where you would get Siri on an iPhone, on this you get Google Now, which to me is a kind of an upgrade and I would prefer if I could do that on an actual iPhone. One thing I did notice, and again if you did watch Detroit Borg's video, it is extremely hard to access the control center on this iPhone 6 clone. Sometimes it almost feels impossible, but I actually got it down almost to a science where if you hold your thumb right there between the bezel and the screen and then you slide up, you can kind of feel it vibrate and then you can nail it every single time. Now, I know I'm going to get tons of questions of where can I buy this, and I want to tell you with a giant warning sign, do not buy this for anything more than purely entertainment. This particular one you can pick up on Chinese websites from anywhere from 160 to 200 bucks. I know as of August 1st, Goofone will be releasing their clone version of the iPhone 6. But honestly, as you can see from performance, you're not getting anything that you would really want on an iPhone. And at this price, for a little bit more, you can get a Nexus 5. Or if you can find it, you can get something like the OnePlus One, which is going to absolutely destroy this in performance and overall just usability. I did get a chance to do a little bit of gaming on this iPhone 6 clone, and it wasn't as bad or as terrible as I would have imagined. But the actual touch screen wasn't really responsive and it kind of hindered the gameplay and overall enjoyment at times. Regardless, it did give me insights and a better look of what the 4.7 inch iPhone 6 will look like. I do really enjoy watching movies and media on a screen size like this. Honestly, my ideal screen size is anywhere between 4.7 and 5.1 inches. So as far as that goes, that is making me look forward to the actual iPhone 6. Now, in case anyone's curious, that right there is the Shield, and I've always been wanting to watch the series. I've heard great things. Big fan of Kurt Sutter. I hadn't really made the plunge to buy any DVD sets or buy it online, but I actually recently started catching up and I'm able to watch the entire series with Hulu Plus. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Hulu, but Hulu. Classic timepiece almost. Anyway, but the white stripes here. When I first first saw the iPhone 6 and N Plus, I thought, man, that's just kind of like tacky. But in person, I get it. And just thinking about it over time, because what it's doing is it's giving you a kind of generational fallback to the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5S, which had the separate areas of glass in the top and the bottom with the metal. So there's a kind of continuity of design. So you look at it and still somehow this area and this area say iPhone to you. And it's actually not that bad looking. And just a solid colored slab would be kind of boring. Now let's see how our stripes look on the space gray model and enlarged. A bit more subtle there. You've got light gray versus dark gray, and depending how you're looking at how the light's reflecting, this might actually look like the darker gray here. In person, it looks lighter than the material here. On the video, it's showing up as kind of darker, which is kind of funny. And then there's the white one, which is, well, white face, and then just a lighter anodized aluminum here. Overall, the thinness of the device is 6.9 millimeters for the iPhone 6 and 7.1. Exquisitely thin. That's 0 0.27 or 0 0.28 inches for those two models. Really nice and skinny. We have our volume controls. Nice metal over here. And here's our little slider lock for the ringer silencer, as always. As ever, lightning port and speaker at the bottom. God forbid we get serious speakers here, huh? And there's the headphone jack. Same thing on our little friend, the 6. Really, you're just looking at the same design, only blown up or shrunk down, depending on how you want to look at it. 
Okay, it's a six. This is a 4.7 inch screen, 1355 by 750. It feels good. It actually feels nice in the hand. There's even a shortcut that allows you to reach all of your apps with a simple double tap on the home button. Plus, you have a revamped camera on the back, a new rounded design. It also feels a little bit like iPod Touch before. Nice little camera lens there. Feels bright and crisp. We've got iOS 8 on this. It is capable to work with Apple Pay for easy touch payments. And it will be available at 199 starting price for 16 gigs, going up to 128 gigabytes at the 399 point, September 19th. That's Scott's time with a first look at the iPhone 6 in my hand in space gray. I am with the iPhone 6 Plus. What makes this Plus? It's a 5.5 inch 1080p display.